we're looking at how to common factor here. Uh, so for a warm-up, I want you to fill in the blank space baby with a monomial or a binomial, not with you writing your name. So in this blank space, you're going to need to put what you think you would need to multiply the 2x and the minus 3 by in order to get this answer. Similarly, figure out what goes in this blank space in order that when you multiply it, you will get this answer. Uh, when you get down to the ones down here, you're taking that minus 5 and figuring out what you need to multiply it by to get your answer. So put this on pause, give it a try, and then you can check your work. Alright, if you check your answers here, the number for the first one that you would need would have to be a 5 because 5 times the 2x gives us the 10x and then times the minus 3 gives us the minus 15 uh, inside our answer bracket. Here we have a 2x, it multiplies our 8x to get our 16xy and then our plus 6xy um, with the 3y. This one, when we multiply by negative 5, we would need this expression, the minus 3x squared plus 5x squared y to get the given expression. And what we need to multiply 5x squared y by would be a 2 take away a 3xy squared. So hopefully your answers match mine. Let me know if, if something seems really off. Couple of definitions here. We want to define what factor means. Now, back when you were much younger, um, in previous years, you may have talked about the factoring tree for particular numbers. So, for example, if you had the number 12, you may have broken 12 into like 3 times 4. So 12 is equal to 3 times 4. 3 and 4 are factors of 12 because they multiply together to get 12. If you go down to prime factorization, that would equal 3 because 3 is a prime number, but 4 is not prime. 4 can be broken down again to be a 2 times 2. So our prime factorization tree means that 12 is really 3 times 2 times 2. Now when we're working with polynomials, we're looking for an expression, not just numbers, but in general, a factor is a number or term that is multiplied by another to make a given number or expression. So if we look back to our examples that we had up above, we had, uh, on the last one for example, we had a 5x squared, that is a factor of this expression 10x squared y minus 15x cubed y cubed. It's not the, gr uh, it is the greatest common factor in this case. It's the biggest uh, term, the, the, the biggest pieces that have come out of my given expression. Um, and then I found what it's needing to be multiplied by in order to get my final expression. So my, my 5x squared y was my factor. It in fact is called the common factor. It is the largest number or term that will divide evenly into all other terms. So that is what we have here. It is a common, it is the greatest common factor. All right, so we're going to learn this process. How do we actually find a common factor? So if we don't have the, the blank to fill in and then some other stuff to multiply it by, the question is how do we do that? Well, to get the coefficient part, to get the number part, of our common factor, you're going to find the biggest number, the biggest common divisor of all the coefficients of the terms. So again, if I would look back to my um, last example that we had, my coefficient was a 10 and a 15. I want the biggest number that can divide evenly into 10 and into 15, and by evenly I mean with a remainder of 0. So 5 is the biggest number that can do that. So that's how we get the number part. You're going to look at every single term and you want the biggest number that would divide every single term. Now to get your variable part, to get the variable part in the common factor, you've got to actually look for what variable is common to every single term and then look at each variable separately. So in my last example I had two variables, I had x and y. So you would look at the x separately, yes it appears in both terms, and then you want to pick the lowest exponent in the term. So if I look at what I have, I had an x squared and then I have an x cubed. My lowest exponent was my x squared. So that is part of my common factor. You'll notice over here I had an x squared with that 5. And then I see that y is common to both terms. I have a y in this one, a y to the 1, and then I have a y cubed here. The lowest exponent is y to the 1, so when I common factor, my common factor needs a y to the 1. So use the smallest. Alright, remember, the common factor should, should, 
divide, not dividing, divide each of the terms in the polynomial evenly. How to check to see if you've got the uh, at least the factored part right. It might not be the greatest common, but you can try expanding, multiplying your factored expression to see if you get back to the original. It's true for common factoring. It's actually true for every single kind of factoring we're going to be doing. Okay, so then on the next section, there are some examples that you can try doing some common factoring. If you want to try it, if you think you've got it, great. Uh, if not, I am going to go through the uh, first example and then I'll put it on, I'll leave a space where you can put it on pause and try, try the next ones. Okay, so if we want to check this one and see if we know how to do it, um, we want to look at the coefficients. So I have a 24 and a 16 and I want the biggest number that can divide both of those. All right, so I'm thinking uh, 2 can, well, but can I go bigger than 2? Uh, I, can, I think I can go 4. 4 goes into 24 6 times, and into 16 it would go 4. Uh, but let me see. If that goes in 6 and 4, they're both even numbers, so I can take another group of 2. So if I double 4, I get to 8. 8 divides 6 3 times and 8 would divide 16 2 times. So now I'm left with a 3 and a 2, which have nothing left in common. So part of my common factor would be 8. And then I'm going to check the variable parts. My first term has an x, but my second term doesn't have an x. So there's no variable that's common to both. So 8 is my common factor. That's it. So then I figure out, well, what do I need to multiply 8 by to get back to my original expression? Or think of it as dividing. If I take 24x and divide it by the 8, I would have a 3x. Or 8 times 3 would give me my 24, and I need an x to go with it. Then I need a plus, because I have a plus 16. And I know that if I divide, uh, divide 16 by 8, I would get 2. Or I can think 8 times a number gives me 16, and that number would have to be 2. And that's my factoring form. Okay, So I've got something, an 8, times another expression. Uh, you can put this on pause and try the next ones on your own, um, or you can just keep listening. Okay, the next one, if I look at the number parts, I have a 3 and I have a 9. What's common is 3. 3 can divide both those terms. Uh, the first term has an x, but the second term does not have an x, so x is not common to both terms. The second one has a y, but the first one doesn't have a y. y is not common to both terms. So 3 is my common factor. I would need to multiply 3 by an x to get the 3x as my first term. I need a plus. I would need to multiply my 3 by 3 to get the 9, and I need a y to go with that. And if I were to expand that through, yep, I get 3x and a plus 9y. Looking at the next one, 6 and 9, they have a 3, a factor of 3 in common, and they both have an x, and x to the 1 is the smallest power, so I'm going to have x. Uh, and then I figure out, what do I need to multiply 3x by to get 6x squared? I would need a 2, and I would need an x. And then I would need a takeaway. 3 times 3 is 9, and I need just x to the 1, which I already have as part of my common factor, so that is done. All right, my next one is the 3-term factoring. So I need a number that would divide 8, 6, and 4. And I'm thinking 2 definitely does. And if I take 2 out, I would have a 4, and I would have a 3, and I would have a 2. And there's nothing more common between 4, 3, and 2. So I do know that my number part should be a 2. Every term has an x. I have an x to the 5, an x cubed, and an x squared. The smallest exponent was the squared, so I'm going to take a two, uh, an x squared. Every term has a y. The first one has a y to the 1. The second is y cubed, and the third is y to the 4. The smallest one was y to the 1. So there's my common factor. I would need to multiply 2 by 4 to get the 8. I need x to the 5, and I've only got x squared here. So I need three more factors of x to get x to the 5. And I just need a y to the 1, and I already have y to the 1 here. So that one's done. Then I'm going to need the takeaway. 2 times 3 gives me the 6. I need an x cubed, and I only have an x squared here, so I need another factor of x to make it x cubed. I need y cubed, and I only have y to the 1, so I'm going to need a y squared to go with that. Then I would have a plus. I would need to multiply 2 by 2 to get 4. I need an x squared, and I've already got the x squared. I need a y to the 4, and I've only got y to the 1, so I need a y cubed there. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense for you. 
um, you can go uh, follow all the instructions that are on the classroom.